that we are actually wired to connect. I mean, there is this an amazing kind of new growth edge to the neuroscience research, especially in the last five to 10 years, that's been looking at the mechanisms by which our minds and bodies are wired to connect socially with others around us. And that when those social connections are impeded or interrupted or threatened in some way, that there's kind of a challenge between different sides, our minds and bodies perceive that as just as challenging as if we were having a physical threat because the part of the brain that controls pain doesn't distinguish, the pain distress network doesn't distinguish between physical pain and emotional pain and social pain. So when others around us are activated that they've experienced a lot of stress and their thinking brain functions are degraded and maybe they're you know, talking, you know, their emotions are driving what they're saying or their stress is leading them to say things in ways that are not kind. Our survival brain is picking that up as very threatening and that's turning on stress in us. And then there is stress and emotion contagion between the groups. So it can become a bit of a vicious cycle. I'm getting more stressed, so your system is getting more stressed. So that's making my system more stressed. And it's one of the reasons why that, you know, let's try and bring our intellects in the room and solve it, you know, rationally. It could go off the rails really easily. If one, if, if just one party to that conversation is activated outside of their own window of tolerance, 